So now we are going to talk about the test for variance. Again, we will have the right tail test, left tail and two tailed. The difference here would come in the hypothesis. The Instead of the parameter mu, you would have sigma square and uh, the test statistic obviously would vary. So let me just tell you, first of all, what is the hypothesis over here? Because it is a right tail test and you are interested now in variance. So basically, sigma naught square is the hypothesized population variance that somebody has made a claim about this. And now you want to check whether the claim that has been made is correct or not. So in the same way as we have done earlier also, the same logic here applies here also. So it is a right tail test. So we are basically interested to see or whether the population variance is actually greater than that hypothesized or the claimed value or not. So right tail test. So we are dealing with this and the test statistic obviously because it is sigma square. So you know that sample variance would come into picture. And whenever we deal with sample variance, chi-square distribution comes and this is the test statistic that we deal with. Note that here also we calculate the test statistic under the null hypothesis. That, you, that is why you substitute the value of sigma naught square. And that is the reason you keep this equality under the null hypothesis only. So in all the cases you might have seen that I have kept equality sign in the null hypothesis because we actually want to calculate the test statistic under the null hypothesis that is actually you substitute that value so that is why you have this and this is the test statistic that we have been using earlier also so n minus 1 times sample s square basically this would follow sigma naught square this would follow chi square distribution and then minus 1 degrees of freedom so you would reject the null hypothesis again for a specified value of alpha you would reject the null hypothesis if chi square value that you have obtained here is greater than chi square u so chi square u over here this is basically the upper tail value for alpha note that chi square is not like your uh, t distribution or z right it is like from 0 to infinity so it is somewhat like this right skewed so let me redraw this all right so chi square u would be some value here right and this is basically your alpha so the remaining one would be one minus alpha so you would reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic that you have calculated is greater than chi square u so again you see that it is the alignment is there obviously this thing remains same over here Obviously, if chi-square is greater than the critical region, it basically means that it is following in the rejection region. Basically, reject the null hypothesis in that case. So, this is the rejection region. Likewise, you can also write the p-value approach. So, it will be the probability that your value that chi-square is greater than or equal to the computed chi-square value that you have over here. So, p-value would be probability that chi-square is greater than chi-square computed value that is your here or I, if I put because here we do not have a star like here if I put a suffix so it would be star value so this probability you could look at likewise when it is left tail test so you would be looking at the left tail of the distribution so you are basically so looking at what are the you are verifying the claim whether the population variance is less than the Mm, hypothesized population variance or not right whatever the claim is there again the test statistic would be same in this situation also it is calculated under the null hypothesis and in this case because it is left tail you are working with the lower tail value so if this is your chi square so you are basically working with some value here right so this would be your chi square L. and here this is basically your alpha so again, if the value that you have calculated is falling in this shaded portion, it means you are going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay. Likewise, for the two-tailed also, same thing there. For a specified value, because it can either fall in both the directions, so you will have here chi-square L 
and lower tail and here it would be chi square with upper tail here at alpha by 2 on both the sides so this one would be alpha by 2 this shaded portion and this one would be your alpha by 2 so if it is falling in this shaded portion the test statistic that you have cal calculated if that is falling in the shaded portion it means that you have to reject the null hypothesis conclude that this is actually true alternative is true it means that variance is actually different from the hypothesized population variance to understand this let us consider an example imagine a physician investigating an innovative diagnostic method so it is the same example that we have considered earlier it is just that here we are looking at the variance earlier we were interested in the mean so the physician suggests that the new method is more consistent with the old than the old one consistent more consistent means that variability is less as indicated by a lower variance the old technique has a known recovery time variance of four days Assuming that recovery times are normally distributed, the physician records the recovery periods for 10 patients using the new method which are given as follows, right? He has recorded this. The physician plans to perform a statistical test with a significance level of 0 0.01. The objective is to determine if there is a statistical evidence to support the physician's claim that the variance in recovery times with the new technique is indeed less than that of the old technique okay so you have to find whether it is actually less than that so that is why sigma square less than 4 that is we are dealing with the left tail test and this value 4 because that is the hypothesized value which is given to us alpha value is given right now you can calculate the test statistic so n minus 1 so n actually is 10 sample variance over here is sub 2.5 square basically sigma naught is 4 which is given to us here you simplify this you would get 5.625 now you have to compare it with your critical value so here since we are dealing with the left tail test so it means you would be looking at the lower tail okay so chi square l it comes out as 2.088 Thus, the critical value is 2.088 and here what you have obtained is 5.625. So, the test statistic is greater than chi-square. So, it does not fall in the rejection region. Okay, So, you would reject H0 if chi-square value that you have computed that this test statistic is less than your chi-square L, right? lower tail. Now, in this case, it is greater than that. It means that we do not have sufficient evidence we fail to reject the null hypothesis therefore you conclude that the doctors claim that the new diagnostic technique has less variability is there you it is basically you are rejecting that claim right h naught is rejected it means this is not going to happen so variability that his claim was that variability of the new method is less than that of the old method right old method has this four so, if you are rejecting the null hypothesis, you fail to reject the null hypothesis. So, it means that his claim is incorrect. Likewise, you can do for the p-value approach also. First three steps would remain same. And here you would compute your chi-square is greater than or equal to computed chi-square. Sorry for this typo. This would be less than equal to because we are working with the left tail test so probability that chi square is less than computed chi square so this value would also be less than equal to so now we come to the test for one proportion okay so in test for one proportion if you can recall we would be using your binomial distribution but since we have an approximation for the normal so we will be using that so here also right tail test it means that p is greater than p naught and the alternate uh, null would be the reverse of that so it would be p less than p naught right 
test statistic here would be again because it follows approximately follows your standard normal distribution so it would be p hat minus p naught so p hat here follows normal with parameter p naught and here you had this sigma p hat square right so p hat you standardize it you would get this as a standard normal so this is calculated under the null hypothesis right so that is why you have p naught over here it's easy and obviously proportion all the results for proportion follow are in sync basically with your uh, main results for the mean also right or when mu is unknown you are interested in mean but sigma is known to you so here again you would be rejecting the null hypothesis if z star is greater than z alpha so if your test statistic basically is greater than the critical value that is z alpha then you reject the null hypothesis and conclude that alternative over here is true and under the null hypothesis we know that sigma p hat is basically this right we have seen earlier also and we need to uh, check this condition that n p naught is greater than or equal to 5 and n times 1 minus p naught should be also greater than or equal to 5 that is it should be at least 5 right n p naught and n1 n times 1 minus p naught should be at least 5 then only this approximation would hold true so we have studied this earlier also now in the left tail what will happen this would be the alternative right because we are dealing with proportion that is less than p naught z star can be calculated right it would be the same test statistic and now in this case again we are dealing with the left tail right so left extreme so in this case it would be minus z alpha okay so if the test statistic that you have calculated is coming out to be less than minus z alpha so basically as i told you earlier also so it is somewhat here it means if it is falling in this shaded region right if it is z star less than minus z alpha means this only it is falling in this shaded portion so in that case you would reject the null hypothesis because that is the rejection region right and here again you have the negative sign so it shows that the values that these values that you have they are less than this p naught that is why you have the negative values and it shows that it aligns with your alternative finally you will have the two tail test test statistic would remain same and here also since it is two tailed so you can have negative and positive values on either side so or you can say that there will be two extremes so you take the check compare this absolute value with the z value alpha by 2 so now you have in the two tail you will have alpha by 2 because alpha is the total area and it gets divided into the two halves so likewise if you consider this example over here so a national fitness survey recently found that 44 percent of adults participate in regular exercise Regular exercise basically means that at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity per week. Now, the mayor of a health conscious small town claims that their community is more active than the national average. Right? So, it is greater than 44%. Okay? Now, what he does is that the local health department wants to investigate this claim and they randomly sample 2500 adults and from that they discover that 1200 actually meet that criteria so sample proportion is given to you that right? so p hat is basically x by n so x over here is 1200 by n is 2500 and this 44 percent is p naught pro population proportion 0.44 okay Determine whether there is substantial evidence to support the mayor's claim that a greater percentage of their adult population engages in regular exercise compared to the national figure. So, you have to check whether there is sufficient evidence that the mayor's claim is greater than, right? That has a greater percentage of their adult population. So, let us see. So, if you denote P, as the proportion of adults in the town who engage in regular exercise then the first step is to check the conditions right you can use the z test obviously you have to check whether those conditions np 
and n p naught are satisfied n p naught and n times 1 minus p naught so this has to be 5 so in some books you would find that it is 10 also so you have to be consistent with whatever you take so it is here it is a right tail test because p is greater than they want to see whether it is greater than that 44 percent or not because that was the mayor's claim alpha is 0 0.05 you can compute the value of the test statistic because p hat is given to you p hat is basically x by n that i was saying so it is 1200 by 2500 it is approximately 1.48 and p naught is this value sigma p is this basically right so from here if you see this is the formula for calculating the standard error so p naught times 1 minus p naught divided by n so you know p naught you know n so you can easily calculate and this value comes out as 4.03 now at alpha 0 0.05 when you check this value it comes out as 1.645 okay since this test statistic over here that is it was 4.03 it is greater than your critical value so you reject the null hypothesis and conclude that you have sufficient evidence to support the claim that a higher percentage of adults in the town engage in regular exercise compared to the national figure okay because his claim was that it is more than that right p is greater than 0.44 so you are rejecting um, the null hypothesis and concluding that actually the claim that mayor was making is actually correct right so if you have to solve it using the p-value approach again you can write the first three steps same way you will compute the p-value so probability that z star is given to you as 4.03 it is a right tail test so you will write the p-value approach in this way and if you look from the table you would get that it is 0 0.0040s 0, 0, right it's very very small value so p-value is obviously it is going to be less than alpha whatever alpha you take so you reject the null hypothesis and conclude that alternative is true so this is how we perform the hypothesis testing using the two approaches that is the rejection region approach and the p-value approach for the single sample problem right so in the next week we will see for the two sample problems how do we deal with that okay and in the next lecture for this week, we would use Python to solve these problems. Thank you.